okay, so the chapter picks up where we left off with Shiki and LC coming up with their own theories of what's happened to Ziggy, while Wizard continues to say that Ziggy, the, Z the Ziggy we, we see now, is the true form of himself. And it's in this moment where I realized I, th I th where I realized I think I know what Mashman's doing here, which is that, which which, which is that Wizard, Wizard, LC, Shiki. Absolutely none of them are necessarily wrong. In fact, all, all three of them are actually correct in their assessments about Ziggy because the Ziggy we, they've come to know is the Ziggy we're seeing now, or more to the point, the fully realized and whole version of the character. Kind, the kind and gentle side of Ziggy is still there, and it is a genuine part of, it is still a genuine part of who he is now, but so is the ruthless and cutthroat side of him as well. Like, that's the part of himself that that was regained with the return of his memories and for as weird as it is this would this kind of sheds a light on a lot of ziggy's actions at this point and even though what he's doing is is perceived as misguided and evil i think he i think ziggy also genuinely believes what he's doing is the only way to save the world in order to save the cosmos the galaxy all that shit that Z, that zig that shiki and mother I think Ziggy, in Ziggy's mind, Shiki and Mother are enough of a threat to the galaxy at large to justify his actions and how he does have generally good intentions, even if his actions are contradictory to that. Like this, like this, this also makes me wonder what exactly it is about Mother that, Z that Ziggy knows that that the others aren't aware of. Because if Ziggy is of sound mind and doing all this out of a twisted but genuine desire to protect the world, protect the galaxy, all that then this does cast a bit of suspicion on mother herself and the nature of, including the nature of her power to grant wishes as well as the nature of what the connection between shiki and mother is <clears throat> and the thing is nothing like don't get me wrong everything ziggy is doing nothing is ever going to justify his actions but there is the sense i'm getting now that ziggy needs to do what he's doing in order to say the people he does care about and and the and the genuine connections he's going to have left after, after he has to, he's forced to kill Shiki, like with, like Elsie and the remaining Sarsians, and like even like even even if that means casting aside the most important connection he has, like there's, th this chapter kind of seems to reinforce the idea that there's something about Shiki, that has made Ziggy view his grandson as a necessary sacrifice. Like it isn't, and and he's willing, and right now he has the res, and right now. Like it, none, it has the resolve in order to make that sacrifice. Um, with that said, I want to talk about the, the the other thing I want to talk about is justice because once again, he he's his very frustrating self, not looking at the <coughs> at the bigger picture of what's going on, or at least that's what it appears to be on the surface. Because reading the whole conversation between Justice and Elsie. It was very interesting that there were little moments that made me think if justice really wanted to do what he said to elsie in in the moment he would have already had her on the ship not sitting around having a damn conversation with her like justice is the one to just say okay i've got you not not no let's go like again e e even if he said he was waiting for them like like but even even the whole thing he said about waiting for them that in itself shows like yeah even if he intends to do to elsie what he intends to do He's 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 kind of, he has changed a little bit. Like it's it's one of those things where, for as frustratedly rigid as he he is, he is still in his views of the situation. I'm also getting the sense that he's also right now he's wanting answers. He's fishing for answers out of Elsie about what's really going on. And even though, again, he outwardly expresses that things are under control, I think deep down, Justice knows. They aren't, and he wants to know in full detail of what's going on, or at least the things he hasn't been told. Cause, yeah, let's. I think I think the government, like I said, let's face facts. The government's not gonna tell him, not gonna tell Justice anything, no matter how high up on the food chain in the military he is. So, like, I'm sh I'm sure they've probably left out a few details that that Ziggy that that Justice himself like wants answers to. He's so it does. So in that sense, it does show at least to a certain degree that, that he has, that he has grown. Like he, he, he pretty much does want, 
he pretty much does want to like sit down and actually listen to what Elsie has to say and what and what she's going to tell him. Like, they're again, they're <coughs> like even even when he said, even when he said he, he's waiting for someone, that in itself already shows that yeah, he's he's willing to listen. He wants to know what exactly is going on. So. <coughs> Overall, a nice little bit of a nice character moment for a nice character moment for Justice to be sure. It's just a matter of where that conversation leads now, and even more so than that, though, I'm curious as to what the. I kind of want. I kind of want want a conversation and a. <clears throat> I kind of want a conversation between. I kind of want uh, Shiki and Justice to meet again because. Yeah, they still had to clear that whole thing up as well. Um, moving on from that, though, let's talk about the Battle of Rebecca vs. Clown. Because I've made, again, I've made it no secret that this is the battle I was kind of least interested in. Because I just didn't know what kind of emotional hook Majin would pull from this battle. And in, in, order to, in order to make us invested in it. And honestly, credit where it's due, he did something really smart. Which is tie... Which is tie Rebecca's battle into what she loves the most. <coughs> Performing, her friends, helping people, just everything that makes up Rebecca's character is what's is what's tied her to this battle. And and, and showing us Rebecca's message through her B cube is a great way to convey that everything she does, she does for her fans. And because she likes doing and because she likes doing it, while at the same time also acknowledging and conveying that for as much that that, that that that's the very reason that she had to make that that broadcast of saying that, that that she's going to be away, that she's going to be in battle, and that for as much as she loves being a YouTuber and she loves her fans, ultimately her friends do come first, and that she'll do anything to protect them because she loves them. And in in a weird kind of connected twist of fate, all those adventures she's had with her fans, her friends are also what make. <coughs> Are also what make her channel what it is, and again, I, I like how it tied her her love is for being a YouTuber to to her to her friends together. It's it was actually it was a really smart way of doing that, honestly. Um, <coughs> now, one thing now one thing I love about this about this revelation as well is that it gives new perspective on Rebecca's resolve and how a lot of it is her working. Through her, through her fear every single every single day she every single time she's in battle, and but she does it anyway for the sake of everyone else and carrying and carrying that burden carrying that burden of doing what she needs to do to help them and and I also like that Mashima did bring her relationship with Billy back into play with this this chapter as as one of those key, as as one of those key relationships that that she must protect as motivation for. Labilia to do what she can to help as well. Although, with Labilia heading out into battle, I'm a little worried this is another. This is Mashima kind of pushing Labilia closer to her death. Like that's kind of the one th that like Labilia right now kind of has. Again, even though, even though we we know that that her sickness can be cured, and I don't know if it already is, it still feels like he's kind of pushing a death flag on her or something like that. I don't know. I hope not, but we'll have to see. Um, also, on a more technical note, I do like how this chapter brought up the idea that Cat Leaper helps Rebecca's sense of balance. Like, it's something I had never thought of before because of the more outrageous applications of her power, but it does make sense that in a basic combat application, it would allow her, her greater mobility in, in that regard as well. And, yeah, what what better way to utilize, you know, be, for that to be utilized than on a trapeze rope? Um... All that is all that aside, though, I'm hoping this battle comes to an end soon because Clown is is both is kind of the mo still kind of the most annoying of the Dark Stars, but I am still curious enough to wonder where the whole Ring of Fire is going to take this fight because it sounds like Mashima is about to take him from this annoying from this annoyingly this annoying character to much more sadistic, which. Yeah, just like with Abilia, it does make me wonder if he's planning to kill Rebecca or at least setting up to to happen later down the line because I'm getting a few mixed messages on that. I'm getting a few mixed messages from the tone of this, of this, of how of how this chapter ended, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Um, but yeah, guys, 
that's pretty much all I got for this review. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe. From my Twitter, Analyst Control. Be sure to the notification bell, hit the subscribe button, and just share the video. Alright, guys. Dark Night of Me, signing off. Later, everyone.